Hello beach lovers! An amazing thing happened to us a few weeks ago as we were shelling on Sanibel. We came across a nesting turtle and today I'm going to tell you all about our encounter with this gorgeous creature, the loggerhead turtle. Welcome to another SWF Beach Life video. If you like the beach and things beach related, you should hit that subscribe button because I do drop a new video every single week. So as we were shelling on Sanibel, we came across this nesting female along with two employees from the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation, which I will refer to as SCCF in this video. I will also put a link to their website in the description if you'd like to discover more about this organization. This turtle encounter was amazing because we didn't need to worry if we were going to stress the turtle and I know we could observe her at a safe distance and not disturb her in any way. And we also got some information about this specific turtle whose official name is Placid Periwinkle. Now the employee that you see on screen is tagging this turtle. The SCCF is permitted through FWC, which is the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, to conduct sea turtle research. This turtle was already microchipped, but now they are applying flipper tags. And this means moving forward, this turtle can be identified visually instead of having to scan her microchip. There is a small time window where the SCCF employees can work with the turtles. Periwinkle is currently in a kind of a trance created by a surge of hormones that happens when turtles nest and lay their eggs. Hopefully she'll come back in two weeks and lay more eggs. She can nest three to five times during the nesting season, which lasts from May through October. There are three measurements that the SCCF employee is going to take. Two or for her length, which is from the notch in the top of her shell to the longest part of her shell called notch to tip. And then they're going to measure her from the notch on the top of her shell to the notch on the bottom of her shell, which is then called notch to notch. And then finally, she'll be measured at the widest part of her shell. She did measure 88.6 centimeters long from the notch to notch measurement, which means she is about three feet long, just her shell. Right now he is doing that with measurement and she ended up being 77.5 centimeters wide, which equates to about 30 inches. Lastly, he's going to check her flipper tags just to make sure that they have the right numbers recorded. Then we're gonna wait and let her finish laying her eggs. This is extremely rare to have a turtle nesting during the day like this. So we were feeling really, really lucky that we came across this turtle and the employees when we did. Periwinkle was first recorded nesting on the west end of Sanibel in 2017. According to the SCCF employees, loggerhead turtles mature at about 25 to 30 years of age, so periwinkle is at a minimum somewhere between 28 to 33 years old. The SCCF chooses a new theme to name turtles each year, which is kind of fun. 2017 was ice cream flavors, 2018 was spices, 2019 was fruits, and then now in 2020, they're using city names. Periwinkle will eventually cover her eggs with her back legs and then eventually use her front flippers to make a sand pile that will be marked by the SECF employees and a piece of wire will go over the nest to protect the eggs from coyotes and other predators. Now along the way I have shown you other and different ways that turtle nests have been marked in different counties and it makes a lot of sense because if you don't have coyotes you don't need to cover the nest with wire. But if you're somewhere that's a little more remote kind of like Sanibel you're going to need to protect the nest from other predators. So very interesting stuff. It was really hot out while we were taking this and taking this video and watching this take place and this poor baby had to take a bunch of breaks i mean it, it was really quite warm so i'm sure she wanted to finish her job and you know finish and get back into the, the gulf so the adult loggerhead sea turtle weighs approximately 300 pounds with the largest specimens weighing in at more than 1,000 pounds the loggerhead has a lifespan of about 47 to 67 years. 
It spends most of its life in saltwater and estuary-like habitats with females, like this one, briefly coming ashore to lay eggs. The loggerhead sea turtle has a low reproductive rate. Females may lay two to five clutches of up to about 130 eggs in a season, but then will not produce any more eggs for another two to three years. Mature loggerhead females often return to the beach where they were hatched to lay their own eggs, and sometimes they travel thousands of miles. They're able to do this with the help of the Earth's invisible magnetic field, which loggerheads use to navigate at sea. Each stretch of coastline has its own magnetic signature, and these turtles remember and use them as guides. Breeding occurs year-round, but peaks in the summer months. The loggerhead sea turtle nests over the broadest geographical range of any sea turtle, with Florida being the most popular nesting site. The turtle eggs will incubate for a period of about six to eight weeks. This is not precise or a science, it really kind of just depends. The gender of the turtles is determined by the temperature of the nest. My husband and I had ran into a biologist that was working on the beach and he referred to this phenomenon as hot chicks and cool dudes, meaning the higher the temperature, it will produce females and then the lower temperatures will produce males. At a ambient temperature of approximately 84 degrees Fahrenheit, the nest will be half male and half female. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Hatchlings will dig through the sand in an effort to surface on the beach. This takes place mainly at night in order to avoid predators. Then upon surfacing, the hatchlings instinctively rush toward the sea and swim out as far as they possibly can. The loggerhead sea turtle is the world's largest hard-shelled turtle. The leatherback turtle is larger, however, its shell is soft and not hard like the loggerhead's shell. Loggerhead turtles are named for their large heads that support really powerful jaw muscles, allowing them to crush hard-shelled prey like clams and sea urchins. The loggerhead sea turtle is omnivorous feeding mainly on bottom-dwelling invertebrates, such as gastropods and bivalves, as well as shrimp or crabs or lobsters. It has a greater list of known prey than any other sea turtle. The loggerhead is considered a keystone species, meaning that other animals in the ecosystem depend on it for survival. As I mentioned earlier, these turtles feed on invertebrates, which shells pass through the turtle's digestive system and upon excretion, fall back to the bottom of the ocean for other animals to eat as a calcium source. Predators also rely on loggerhead hatchlings for food. While more than 100 species of animals, including barnacles, crabs, and algae, live on their shells. These highly migratory turtles have an enormous range that encompasses all but the most frigid waters of the world's oceans. They prefer coastal habitats in temperate and subtropical regions, just like myself, though they often frequent inland water bodies and will travel hundreds of miles to reach them. The greatest threat to the loggerhead turtle is loss of nesting habitat due to coastal development, destruction of nests, and human disturbances, such as coastal lighting and housing developments that cause disorientations during the emergence of hatchlings. Down here in Southwest Florida, all along the beach, residents, hotels, condos, and businesses use red colored lights to light up areas that face the beach and the gulf. This helps from disorienting the baby turtles as they make their way from the nest to the sea. It's estimated only one of 1,000 hatchlings survive into adulthood. The average duration of a loggerhead turtle dive is 15 to 30 minutes, but they can stay submerged for up to four hours. It's pretty cool. This encounter is going to stand out as one of the most amazing things we have ever seen on the beach. We still feel so lucky that we got to witness this incredible event. And while Periwinkle might be a little slow on land, once she hits the water, she's gone within seconds. 
She uses her front flippers to propel her through the water and then her back flippers to steer. This poor turtle had a busy morning getting herself, I mean, she really, really hauled herself way up onto the beach, which is good because that'll help the protect the little hatchlings for, you know, you'd see some of those other um, nests there in the foreground and they're a little bit close to the tide and that may eventually be affected, but Periwinkle did a good job. She hauled herself all the way up on the beach. Poor, she, I think she's tired. And uh, like I said earlier, it was hot. So I can imagine that she's looking forward to getting that, getting herself back into that water. So close. And unless the turtles are actually in distress or stranded, or they actually you know, do have something, uh, I guess, medically going on, leave them alone. Just let them do their thing. The poor baby's tired. But she's getting there. And you'll see, once she hits that water, she's gone. <laughs> Come on, honey, you can do it. Do you imagine? <laughs> So close. There she goes. Just watch. God, look at that. She did a great job. Off she goes. And hopefully her nest will survive and little well, hatchlings will be coming out somewhere between six to eight weeks. Thank you for allowing me to share our turtle adventure with you. And if you haven't done so yet, I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my weekly beachy goodness.